because that pawn immediately became a liability. This is unbelievable. Just let's unbelievable. Bring up, let's bring up the analysis board real quick and just show how that finished. That is that is what oh. that is what Magnus Carlsen does, right? That yeah. type of thing right there. And we just quickly bring up that board. Oop, wrong board, actually. That was impressive, that was, too, by the way. That was the first time he did something like this. Yeah, we're, we're back to the live game. But that, that board there was absolutely – that finish there with the pawn going to h7 was absolutely crazy. Yeah, the, maybe uh, we can show that during the break. I mean, I mean, ridiculous how he. Well, I've, how he I've got it up around. here. If we if we got an analysis board, I can I can quickly just show the finish, while while they For play sure. this next opening, just to show that it was h seven, the overcommitment of the pawn. No, <laughs> apparently the apparently the games aren't in order right now. I'm trying to get them up, we'll we'll forget about it and, and and do it later. Right now, we'll go back to the live game that is in progress, but uh, okay. It's never um, over with Magnus. That's the lesson from all of this. It's like. You, you literally can never relax. He will find chances based on a single pass pawn that's somewhere on a seven. And before you know it, it's right in your grill and it's making promoting to a queen. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm shocked, but also not shocked. Magnus and Hikaru are the two guys who, you know, you, you see those things flip around. That's why the game is played. Time pressure puts the, uh, puts the people in uncomfortable spots. Yeah, it's 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 unbelievable, and and it's such a treat to watch this unfold. And and right now, this is in a critical critical phase of the match, Danny for Caruana. Think about it. There's 18 minutes left. Okay, that's probably two more games. Yeah, he really needs to try to go at least one and a half half. At least keep this manageable, because you lose another game, and at that point, it's kind of officially starting to look like a bit of a blowout. Yeah, well, it starts to look. Like smarter chess will be right. No one yeah. likes that, right? He predicted no. a three-game victory, not the exact score necessarily that we'll have, but he did predict a three-game, a three-game margin for Carlson out of the five-one portion. Um, hmm. Okay, this is this is a you know a Petrov. Yeah, that's about everything we can say Seen about this position. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing really else to talk about here. It's just a Petrov. This is a Petrov. Thank you. I, I, I wonder if it's a Petrov, Danny. Do you think this is a Petrov? Yeah. I, is it a Petrov? I wasn't sure what you thought on a controversial topic. I wanted your solicit your advice on, which is whether it's a Petrov. This, whether this is a Petrov. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Carlson it's... with a little pull. I mean, the knight, the knight is a smidge better than the bishop here. Yeah. Just a smidge. Just a smidge, um, smidge Maisel. but it's it's one of those positions where, again, unfortunately for Fabi, the small advantage games have been going Carl's, Carlson's way today. Um, but nothing super exciting. It is it is a Petrov, you know, um, which means the structure is completely symmetrical. Um, yep. You could also and... get this from a Berlin, by the way. We keep saying Petrov. You could get okay, maybe not the exact uh, piece. Pieces are a little bit different, but you could get something like this from a Berlin. Yeah, and this is already starting to look unpleasant, um, and 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 it's magnified, no pun intended. When you're playing Magnus, every slightly unpleasant position basically looks like a lost position. Like you yeah. you you underestimate your position and overestimate Magnus's position, and obviously that produces more mistakes. Objectively, this is very close to equal, but that knight on f5 is nasty. Maybe queen f3 to x-ray black's queen, and you know, typical Magnus stuff starts happening. Yep. And at this point, when you have an edge on the clock too, you're willing for this one to go all the way down to the wire. Not not mm -hmm. gonna not gonna say, all right, you've earned it, buddy. Here's a draw. That's not that's not what they do here. Um, all right. Well, yeah. Magnus using his thirty second edge to think about how to approach because Bobby. I mean, Danya. Like you can play C three <laughs> and Queen of three. You could also go all in here a little bit, right? At some point, get a little. Fun. Here he goes a little I, bit. I was gonna point out H five, and and the idea is isn't quite tactical. I think it's more positional. He's just trying to create a lot of strain on Black's king side, right? And and maybe create the preconditions for some sort of a sacrifice on g6, which could not be such a remote possibility, Danny, if you think about it, if the queen moves away from f6. It's yeah. already uh, basically a reality. And the other unpleasant thing, of course, is that white controls the only open file, which is always yep. very important. Yep. Here's my obligatory open files are like commodities reference, <laughs> supply and demand. If there's only one, it's even more important than than an open board. And yeah, so uh, what do you do if you're Carwana? Um maybe Bishop G7 and King F8 try to use the the goalkeeper 
you know, mm. to kick the corner kick. I don't know. I like that. Put the king on f8 to get the rook to e8. But then queen e3. White beats him to the punch. Mm -hmm. It's annoying. This is this is such this is so vintage. Car Carl's and Carwana. <laughs> this is like exactly it, it, like classic the, position out of their game. Just a classic. But the, dif the difference is when they drew 12 games in the classical world chess championship, of course, of 2018, as the time control got faster, the same type of style ultimately really favored Carlson being just a little bit better in Fabi than Fabi in, in a couple of these areas. And, and as the seconds tick away, so tough. And, um, we still got a long match to be played. We know that Fabi impressed everybody with his bullet performance versus our junior Agassi. So by no means is it over. But stylistically, this has been Carwana's problem against Carlson throughout their career, right? That that they're very similar, both highly accurate, highly precise, just so good, uh, both very well prepared. Carlson, just like Carwana, but a little bit better in a lot of those spots. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. I think that's the, that's the best way to appreciate uh, the nature of Carlson's three-point lead. None of the games have been blowouts or 20-move yep. wins or, yeah, Caruana blundered a fork here. He's just squeezing and squeezing, and it's merciless. He does it every game, and he's doing it again here. Look at how he manages to weaken the F5 square, Danny, at the cost of a pawn. Yes, but it's not a very good pawn. Now he's going to go knight F5, maybe rookie 5, and, and it's just relentless pressure. No matter how simple the position looks, he's going to make it tough on you. Yep. And it is super instructive. I mean, it, even if it's not the flashiest, sexiest attack you've ever seen, you know, showing your ability to, to drive things like H5 and eventually pry weaknesses and, and make make things happen in an otherwise symmetrical three versus three pawn structure. I think a lot of lower rated players look at those things and those positions and they yawn or they check out. But while, while, while engines have taught us, you know, a lot of things about dynamic chess and how to persevere, there's always tactical shots. They've also showed us ways to this alpha zero H pawn, as we say. They've showed us ways to create chances when, when otherwise players of a previous generation maybe wouldn't have fought so hard in an equal position like this. And that that is a great point, and it's a point that was uh, made also by Veselin Topalov when I interviewed him uh, a, a while back. Uh, I was actually commentating with him uh, during during the World Cup, and, and he mentioned say, that Magnus yeah. Carlsen. One of the specific ways in which he revolutionized the game is that. Literally positions where players would have agreed to draw 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Now they don't even think about agreeing to a draw. It's it's not even a question that, yeah, you're going to squeeze this for another 50 moves. Yep. And uh, it, it's amazing to see how our understanding of the game has revolutionized, even compared to, to the modern era. And yep. Carlson holds all the keys to the kingdom here. The king infiltrating F6. <sighs> <laughs> I mean, the king is coming in. It's like this is this is so hard to hold. I feel so bad, and I'm down two minutes. If I'm Fabiano, in addition to feeling like a boa constrictor is wrapped around my neck, right? It's like yep. when you wrap your kids up to go out in the snow, and you wrap the scarf super tight and the, and the jacket and the gloves, <laughs> and you send them out, and they can't move. Yep, like that's what we're dealing with here. Like Bobby was all dressed up and ready to go play in the snow, but he can't move. Yeah, I totally know what that feels like, Danny, coming from San Francisco. A lot of snow, a lot of snow in the Bay Area. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's uh, it's not fun. And then you're sweating a ton, right? You're warm, even though it's freezing outside. You're dehydrated. I mean, sorry, that's how Fabiano feels right now. A lot like that. No, that's a good comparison. And King F6 yeah. is still in play you could try to get the king around to e5 and attack d5 another iqp position by the way this time carlson is on the other side of it but i i don't think this game is over i mean white still needs to find a way to actually win material here win the d5 yep. pawn or the h7 pawn so a lot of things that carlson could try here but that 13 said, seconds Bob, Bob, i was gonna say fabi's down to 13 seconds nah. uh talk about but what did f4 do uh donya look at that principle of two weaknesses eat your heart out right Magnus is playing both sides of the board, a very, very mature approach. This is, with time pressure, almost an impossible position to hold. I'm not trying to, like, like check out here, but, like, with time pressure, with Magnus, with the weaknesses on both sides of the board, F4, such a strong move to open up the chances of creating other targets. And I want to point out, especially to the young players who are watching this match and trying to emulate the greats, how Carlson is managing his time. He's playing fast, 
Yeah. But he's not playing instantly. He's not trying to flag him. He's taking three, four seconds a move. Yep. And look at what he's doing. He's won the D4 pawn and the game is over. Yeah, and note that when you create opportunities for your opponent, sorry, when you create problems for your opponent, like F4 did, again, speaking to the young players, don't underestimate the practical power of that because it wasn't just that.